start recording, and then I will be a minute or so while I'm looking for something to talk about. Okay. Uh. Alright, we don't have a ton yet, though we'll know, like, in that fight, make sure that we're just looking for opportunities to use our window, specifically, like, when we have Ball and, and uh, the Roadhog diving our tanks, and is where we can maybe be looking to use that, so just making sure we're looking to get value out of that high-powered ability is going to be very helpful. Okay. What? No. No. All right. So in that situation, um, you probably don't want to put too much time focusing on the widow when you have like your widow and I believe one. I think you had like your ball on her as well. So in that situation, okay. when she's like across the map from you. It's more worth for you, it for you to focus on your teammates on point. And in fact, while we were distracted by Widow, we had I think our break die. Um, yeah. Additionally, was Sol I think Soldier was on that high ground right next to us, so, and we weren't really paying attention to him. So we want to make sure we're watching for that, listening for that, so that he's not just sneaking up behind us, and that we can react and drop out faster and whatnot. Okay. So would you recommend me drop low ground? Yeah. So for low firstly, we. Mini? Yeah, so in that situation, we probably either we can duel him or we can drop. Um, like, th there's the potential for you to duel him. Um, but if you don't think you win that, then yeah, you can probably drop. You just gotta watch for the mines, I and mean, we didn't really see where the mines were. Okay. Ooh, oh, no. Oh, I was kind of lucky. Uh, now I don't know what to do. Oh, that's... Okay, that right. works. So note that we have used lamp twice so far, which isn't super frequently. Make sure that we're looking to use them more often, just because it's an incredibly high-powered ability, right? It's essentially a second ultimate on a cooldown, and we haven't really been using it at all, right? So there, I mean, yeah. that's, that's just a good example where pro Hog probably dies there if we didn't use that, and we just haven't been using it frequently um, or been looking to get value out of it. Okay. Is there like a order of priority for who I should be sending my mortality to? Um, it typically it's whoever's most in danger. I mean, like we can get more into the depths of that a after you're not in the middle of a game if that works. What? Yeah. It's unfortunate, just slight delay. Yeah. So like, if you're talking about like you have multiple people in the exact same amount of danger. 
um, mm. then, like, which typically is not going to be the case. You're not typically going to have everybody's in the exact amount. Then you can, the next, like, let's say everybody is in the exact amount of danger. Then you go to, okay, well, are there people grouped up? Can I get more than one person? In which case the group takes the higher priority, right? But in general, it's typically the pe person or people who are in the highest amount of danger that receive immortality. Okay. Oh, I reloaded. Nice. Okay. I think we got slightly tunnel visioned on our Brig when Brig versus Tracer, like when she's full HP, isn't necessarily something we have to be putting our full attention on. And then in that meantime, our team is pushing forwards and our Sigma's like already halfway to point and we're nowhere near him, so therefore he dies, right? When we have our ultimate that can help, we have our immortality that can help. Actually, I don't know if he had immortality, but, um, you know, being there to help him is probably very important. So make sure not tunnel visioning on things that aren't needing us to be tunnel visioned on. Okay. Okay, once again, probably Roadhog there would have been a good example of somewhere we could use immortality. Okay. So you just hop out here and then we can have a short little chat and then I'll go over a couple things and then we'll hop back into another game. So firstly, now that we didn't get to go over these at the beginning since we were in a game, um, firstly, how long have you been playing Overwatch for? Uh, I guess it's like 2018 on and off. Okay, so a little while now. Um, let's say like the past two weeks or so, how often have you been playing the game? Pretty frequently, pretty frequently. Okay, so how, how would you define pretty frequently? Like, is it every single day? How many hours yeah, a day? I like every day, like six hours a day. Okay, so that that is, I would say that is pretty frequently. Um, besides that, let's see what else is there. Um, what do you what do you say your goals are while playing? Are you looking to just climb an SR? Are you looking to improve? Are you looking to just have fun? Uh... I'm. I definitely want to improve. I would rather improve. Like, I want to become a better player, and I think that's gonna in turn increase my SR. But I'd rather focus on, like, game sense and small things here and there. Okay. I guess. Um. And then let's. See. Final one is just. Do you have any questions for me before we continue? Uh, no, not really. All right, so, sounds good. So, over to Baptiste, a um, couple things to talk about. So, I think primarily one of the biggest things I would note within that last game, you seem pretty mechanically sound, like you, you are doing pretty good with just your general, I'm going to go point and click and hit people, and that is working out really well for you. But I'd probably say the two main areas that I'm identifying right away as weaknesses are your immortality usage as well as your ultimate usage. Um, okay. Immortality to go more in depth on that because we didn't see a ton of ults being used um, so we'll get maybe into more examples of that later but immortality um, the first thing I just note that I already mentioned is just the frequency that you're using it right like just noting that abilities and ultimates and everything that we don't use just get zero value right like when we don't do it it doesn't do anything and then therefore that's a value we could have gotten when we use our abilities and ultimates uh, faster, that means we're going to get them charging back up, therefore we're going to get them more frequently. So if we just put them out there, like our ultimates for example, if we were to put them out there, overall we're just getting more ultimates on the board, and therefore more value. The more lamps we throw out, the overall the more value we're getting, 
Additionally, you're not going to learn how to use your lamp better if you're never using it in the first place. So the first step is actually using it. And even if, like, I'd rather see someone use like five bad lamps in a round than to see them use zero or one good lamp, right? Just because it means that they're going to be able to learn how to actually use lamp better rather than never actually doing anything with it and then actually just <laughs> getting zero value, right? You can even get accidental value out of lamp if you're using it. So I'd recommend using it. Now when we do use it, um, let's talk about how we can use it better. So um, firstly, when do you want to be using it? We were talking a little bit about that when it came to priorities that you were just asking about, like, who should I prioritize? And typically the answer of, like, when do you want to use LAMP is you use LAMP when people are low and in danger, right? And those are two separate concepts. Let's go over that real quick. Obviously, you know what, what it's like when somebody's low HP, but um, sometimes people confuse the two. I can be low and sitting in spawn and completely safe, and I can be in danger in it sitting in the middle of their team and be full HP, right? Um, the two can be correlated, right? Like typically when you're low, you're in more danger, but um, danger level isn't necessarily always core, like isn't always the same thing as being low, right? So um, you wanna make sure that you're watching. Typically with your immortality, you're looking for both low and in danger, but then also you can just do in danger, like let's say, Diva bomb, right? Like you, somebody can be perfectly full HP and still die to diva bomb. So, the criteria there would be the danger level. So, I mean, if you want to think of it this way, um, honestly, I might even start saying it this way: is you honestly just use your immortality when people are in danger, and then lowness has a effect on the danger level. That might be a better way of, of phrasing that. So, um, when we're watching our teammates in our games, we want to make sure that we're actively paying attention and being aware of our teammates and uh because sometimes we I, I would i would say that's another thing is that we weren't really aware of what our team was up to and then therefore we would be in the fight and we would be going pew pew shoot shoot doing stuff and then we'd be like oh th this person's dead right and then we go pew pew sh doing stuff doing stuff and then this person's like one hp and then we don't have the time to react to um, he throwing immortality or healing them in time. So you want to make sure that you're actively paying attention to what is my teammates, do, what are they doing, what is the enemy team doing, and then what are their danger levels, and do I need to use immortality? Um, and then that's going to be getting it out there more frequently and at the times that it's actually needed. Like I mentioned before, it is basically your second ultimate on a cooldown. Um, now, additionally, when we're using our lamp, um, as a small little tidbit that can maybe help you um, at like in certain situations, it's very niche, but just as a tiny thing to add in there, um, in case you were not aware, you might be already, if you right click, it's going to follow the exact same projectile pa path as that right click, so you can toss it to the place at ranges, um, that can be helpful. Now, moving on, another way that I'd like to see you use it a little bit better is that a lot of times when we're using our lamp, we kind of just toss it straight on top of our teammates. Typically, this isn't going to be fantastic because if you toss it directly on top of your teammate and that's smack dab in the middle of the open, then it just gets destroyed incredibly easily and it goes down instantly. You're not going to get any value that way. Um, taking a pause for a second, you can probably queue up as well here. Uh, that way we, you can get in a game while we're talking still um so rather than tossing it straight on top of our teammates we want to make sure that when we're throwing it we're throwing it around corners and using cover that way it doesn't go down immediately right because if we toss it here then it goes up to here and then they can just see it and shoot at it and it goes down immediately you don't get as much value out of it whereas if we were to throw it like right here well now it's around that corner where they cannot destroy it but it's covering a large amount of the same area now you can't do that every single time you ever throw a lamp but whenever it's possible you want to look for cover and opportunities um, the same way you do that for yourself right it's not always going to be possible every single moment of the game that you can use cover but you're going to do your best as you play through your uh, through your game to use cover. Uh, I hear you got a game, so you can hop into that. Okay. Oh wait, hello? Hi. Oh, okay. Sorry, I heard something. I was like, "What?" Here you go. Bro, should I be playing back with Mercy? What's the best like combo thing? That... 
Yeah. Yeah. So typically, BAP and Mercy is not about comp at all because Mercy is the more kind of, I guess, technical hero, whereas BAP provide like provides a lot of the uh, burst healing, and they're both spam characters as well. So it works well because they both fit within the same composition. Other characters that fit well with BAP would be Zenyatta, because again, Zenyatta is a spam character who is more technic, has more of that utility versus actually doing flat up healing, um, whereas BAP c makes up for that. So yes, both of those matchups would be very good. Um, whereas like BAP Ana would be more, BAP Ana, BAP Moya, those would be more like meh compositions because uh, it's just a lot of redundant healing. In a lot of cases, you don't need that much just raw healing. So therefore, they wouldn't get as much value. Okay. How am I like? Oh shoot! Wait, never mind. No! Um, keep in mind that your shift has a 10 meter radius. Sometimes I notice that we try to use shift when on people who are a little further than that. So like we try to use it on people who are like 15, 20 meters away. So just keep in mind that our shift actually isn't reaching them at those ranges. Okay. Any good like, uh, I don't know, similar thing. Oh, I hold on. If you need to, you save the thought till after you die or something. Yeah. Oh. Alright. Uh, good. Any good, like, range off of another champ or hero that's, like, the same distance that I can, like, be aware of? Um, I guess. Or is it... Are you. Can you ask that in a different way? I'm not sure I understand the question. Like, um,. If I remember correctly, Lucio's uh, Lucio's like aura is like mm -hmm. fifteen, right? Um, I'm actually in the, I don't know if I know what Lucio's aura. I, I believe it's it's something of that sort. Um, yeah. it and might be like twenty, but yeah, I think I think what? that's close to accurate. Oh shit! Okay. Oh. Yeah, Mem memorizing the numbers wasn't usually my specialty. <laughs> um, I know, okay. Yeah, so I don't know if I like Brig is an aura. I'm not. It, I would imagine it's somewhere within that range of ten meters as well. Um, mm. Do do, because I know you play. Like Ana, Ana doesn't have anything like that. Yeah. Okay. There we kind of like plopped it down without really checking to see where the enemy team was. We kind of just blind fire, like blind popped it, right? Like we weren't checking where they were. So they were actually all way around that corner and we couldn't really do anything with it, right? Yeah. So make sure we're just paying attention. <gasps> no. Yeah, so make sure we're paying attention to like where their team is. Also, just like you use your ult, use your ult when they don't have anywhere to run, not when they're like all next to cover. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Do do. Still looking, you know, still keeping our eye on immortality. Um. Besides that, oh, I just had a blank on what I was about to mention. Um, I guess, yeah, one, one thing that I would maybe bring up 
per, uh, very, very very minor thing, not very important. <laughs> Um, I guess in the in the long run, but your your crosshair, I would say typically, um, if you think about what is the purpose of the crosshair, and the and the purpose of a crosshair is to locate the center of your screen to you know where am I actually aiming so that I can hit my shots. Um, so typically, I would say, and then you can also say like maybe a secondary reason why you have a crosshair is to maybe pl uh, place your crosshair on people's shoulders that's where like crosshairs the crosshair comes into play um mm -hmm. besides that i would probably say that when you get a little funky with them like yours um i would say that th it can just get a little bulky and can maybe just interfere with visibility and doesn't offer anything more than having that dot in the middle because if you think through like what it what is the purpose of the outer ring uh, maybe you do have a purpose for the outer ring but i i couldn't really think of a of a reason for having an outer ring that large but like i said also a minor thing not going to be incredibly big of a deal if you kept it what do you think about playing anna here um anna would actually work probably better with your composition because you're on a dive composition um, yeah. if you would like at some point, like if you're maybe not sure where you should be playing different characters, we can go over that a bit after we're done here. Oh. I don't die there, no! Oh, so in that scenario, why, why, what do you think the reason that you died was? I was late to rotate. Mm. Okay. Um. Yep. Late to rotate, and then yeah. So it, like that means that you didn't have team support, right? And then additionally, yeah. maybe we're also just very out in the open, right? Like we kind of we also like hopped straight up in the air. So making sure we're not just randomly jumping, which will make it easier for them to kill us if we're just randomly jumping for no reason, because then that means that they can track us as we come down. Also making sure we're using cover and not just standing smack dab in the middle of the open. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh -oh. Deceased. So you seem to have a good job of identifying. You, you do a good job of identifying when you're in danger. Right now, our objective is just to do that for other our, our teammates as well. Okay. Once again, when you're using your window, you want to make sure that there's actually people to shoot at it from. So we can maybe go a little bit more in depth on that after our game is over. Um, but in that situation, we had one person in our line of sight, and they were near cover, and they were a mile away from us, right? Yeah. Also note that typically when you use your mortality, um, I don't know, for most of them, it seems as though you don't like to share. You typically use it for yourself. And that's not to say that you can never do that, right? Of course, you should probably be using it for yourself in different situations. But I, just keep in mind that it's also going to get more value the more people you can get shooting through it, right? You're, you're going to get more value out of that if you have five, six people shooting out of your ultimate, that's all that damage multiplied. Oh. Oh no. Oh. 
Don't be afraid to run at him when he's that low, especially like if you have immortality that you can use, because that also like means that you're able to participate in the fight if you kill him and get him out of the way faster. Okay. Get in more. Someone's looking out for me. My turn. Ten seconds. Right, so we'll talk maybe slightly more about this in a moment, but note that that was the second fight in a row that we held on to our ultimate, um, and yeah. therefore again it doesn't do anything. So it's like even in that last, it last like st like frantic stall, it's not gonna do any harm to just plop it down and hope that you can do something with it. Um, so let's hop into some things. I have like three different things I want to talk about. Um, before we do, it seemed as though you had maybe a couple questions there do you still have any questions because i know we may be cut out um so that you could just keep playing your game uh no not really okay so then i had three things that we'll discuss again i am not streaming yet let me stream so i'm streaming um so was there with you would you say because you had asked about it that you maybe have some issue with like knowing when to be picking which support character yeah. Yeah. So, um, within your the, the do you know what three composition main compositions there are in the game? Like, would you be able to name those? Uh, isn't it dive, double shield, and spam? Um, double shield is a version of spam. Um, so I would say that double d double shield falls underneath the spam category, and then you're missing brawl. So you have okay. dive, brawl, and spam. So, um, why don't we just talk real quick about those comps, and then, therefore, that helps us pick out which character, because the there's two main things that, that dictate when you pick a character, um, and that is composition and map, and those are the two things that dictate which character you pick. So, I'm going to um, send you something a picture over Discord real quick. Alright, so, this is your rough compositions chart. Um, this is basically just going to tell you the comps and then how they play. Very easy, very fast. So 
Um, all of them are easy and also important, especially when you get to Brawl and Spam. So um, just to check, you're aware of which characters would make up each of these compositions, or do we need to real quick clarify that? For like every for every role? Um, for just, yeah, in, in general, like what, what characters make up a dive? Uh, would it be, I mean, you could do Ball, Winston, or Diva, but isn't yep. it? Like, isn't Double Bubble the most popular dab right now? Um, yeah, I mean, I I would say that Double Bubble, it, it depends on what other characters you run with it. I would almost say okay. Double Bubble is a hybrid composition. Um, but okay. yeah, you could classify, I would say it's either a hybrid or a dive. Um, so well, I guess let me real quick. So dive is going to be your fast mobile characters. <laughs> um, it's going to be your, like you said, Winston, Diva, Wrecking Ball, Tracer, Genji, Doom, Farah, etc. There's a lot of DPS characters in this one. Um, you have within dive, you have any support character that can keep up with it. So you have Zen with his orbs, Brig with the packs, Mercy, Ana. Those all those are all characters that can work well to dive. Now Brawl is going to be your uh, big chunky, um, hand you know face to face composition that's gonna make up your Ryan Hart, your Zarya, your um, Diva can make up a brawl as well. Keeping in mind that characters are not limited to one composition, they are going to be good in different compositions to different extents. Um, so it's also gonna include your May Reaper, Lucio, Brig, Anna, Bap, Moira. Um, Spam is going to be your long-ranged, far-distance characters that like to just pump out damage. Um, so this would include, like you said, your Double Shield, your Orisa, your Sigma, your Roadhog. This is going to also be characters, uh, you, you know, your Snipers, your Junkrat, your Farah, your Echo. These characters that just like to be far distance, spam out a ton of damage. The, uh, supports would be characters such as Bap and Zen and Mercy would be good support comps. Um, hybrid is anytime you're in a mix of some of these, and there are a bunch of hybrid comps out there. Um, typically, yeah, so t typically how you define like the, them is if you have four characters or more that make up, that are in your comp, it's one of those comps. So for example, if you have four brawl characters, you're a brawl comp, but if you have three brawl characters and two spam characters and a dive character, well, then you just might be on a hybrid. You're not really running any particular comp. Or, I mean, you could be you could be running a different comp because there are other hybrid comps. Like you mentioned, maybe a double bubble would be an example of a hybrid comp. Typically, in general, hybrid comps, how they play is more split up, more sp like spread out, um, more deathmatchy. Um, everyone's kind of doing their own thing. Now... When it comes to playstyles for the other ones, dive is very just straightforward. So you start off far away, you dive in close, right? That's the whole name of it. You travel that short, that long distance very fast. Um, you're also going to start off at a, it doesn't say here, but you're going to start off at a slow pacing, and then you slowly get faster and faster and faster as you get ults and kills, um, which is pretty much how every comp plays by default. So just think of dive, you played it kind of like any other comp works. But brawl and spam is where it gets very, um, just important to know how they work. Brawl, like we mentioned before, is a close-ranged composition. Or I guess, yeah, okay, let's say it. Um, Brawl is a close-ranged composition. Therefore, because they're a close-ranged composition, they like to play fast because the slower they play, the more time other comps have to just poke them out where they can't do anything, right? If Brawl can only do damage from close range and spam and dive can do damage from long range, well then that means that they're just at a disadvantage the longer the fight goes. Spam, on the other hand, is the exact opposite of that. They are far distance characters, and then therefore they thrive when the fight drags out and goes slowly, because that gives them more opportunities to pump out damage from a distance where the brawl and the dive can't reach them, and they can just do as much as they want. So that is our starting point. That's how the compositions operate and work. Now let's talk about when do you play supports in those and which characters make them up. Um, what would you, what range, let's start with Baptiste. Um, what range would you say Baptiste has as a character? Like what, what, what range from your team to enemy team, etc. Like what, where should you be playing? Uh, pretty far. Far from your team or enemy team? From... Far from the enemy team. 
far I, from the enemy but, team. Yeah, I could. You could kind of play it far from uh, your team as well. Like backline, backline. Okay, I would say that that's probably the wrong answer. Um, you're you're right when it comes to enemies. Enemies you play. I would say enemies you play like a medium range away from. You can do far as well. Um, but then as well, that's gonna give you damage fall off, and that's also going to mean that you're. Um, it's also gonna mean that you have more inaccuracy at ranges, but that's not important. The big one I'd say you're wrong there is that Baptiste is a close ranged character in to in comparison to his team. And the, 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 he has a lot of different reasons why that's the case. Firstly, um, when he's you can't use shift from, for your team if you're far away, so that's just one ability out of the way that's completely useless for your teammates if you are far away from them. Um, immortality is, because you're at a range, immortality as well as your right click, both of those are projectiles. Projectiles are inherently more difficult to land at ranges because uh, by the time your, your projectile gets over there they've already moved therefore that just becomes incredibly difficult to predict where they're going this is why hit scan is much better at ranges so um that also applies to your immortality by the time we throw immortality and our healing in there they might already be dead because there's a delay from the time i click the button to the time it reaches if somebody is low hp and we throw immortality in there that's going to take a second to reach them, and then that's extra time for them to die, versus when we're right next to them, that's a lot less of a duration. Um, and then it's also going to be, like I said, more accurate the closer you get to people. Um, additionally, you can't really, this gets into kind of what we were saying before, of you can't really very easily use your ultimate for your whole team if you're a mile away from them, right? If we're all the way back here versus up close to them, up close to them, we can just do this super easily, where we just plop around the corner, and then boom, immortality for everybody. Every, or not immortality, sorry, uh, window for everybody, and we can all shoot through it, everyone does damage. But when you're all the way back here, you can almost, the only way you can use it is selfishly, which isn't going to always be the best way to use it. Um, so those are a lot of the main reasons why Baptiste does not want to be far away from his team. I would say the exception to this is if you are compensating with another advantage such, such as like a high ground right if your position and then still even then i probably wouldn't do far i'd probably do medium so like you can go to a medium range if you have like a high ground that you can work with high ground is going to make it like maybe slightly easier to land your right clicks just and your and immortality just because of the nature it's easier to aim your immortality downwards and plop it like this than it is to toss it forwards like this um, because of the nature, I don't know if I need to explain that, that's just the nature of how it works, it's just easier. Um, so, that, I would say, would be the exception to that, but in general, you're a close-range character to your teammates. So, if we're talking about dive, brawl, and spam, which compositions would your, would Baptiste be good in, and would he, which ones would he be bad in, just off of that distancing? Uh, he'd be good in brawl, bad in dive. Yes, and, exactly. Yeah. For spam, I'm... I don't know. I'd, I'd rather hear your explanation. Yeah. But so like, you, yeah. yeah, so you're correct there. He is really good. So Baptiste is really good in a brawl because that, that's where he thrives. Everybody receives the, the shift. Everyone gets AoE healing. Everybody gets immortality. He's close enough to do all of that very easily, and everyone wants to play close and knit together, right? So brawl, yes, he just works really well with that. Um, dive, he's terrible with. Baptiste is not a good. I, I sorry, I like. A, you can make it work, right? You can make any any character work in any composition. But he's probably one out of the supports. He's one of the worst characters you could play with dive because in a dive, everybody's spread across the entire map, and he's not going to be able to keep up with everything. Now, um, he is also really good with spam comp he's i probably say he's equal in that to brawl because not all spam comps but a good majority of them they're they're going to be pretty knit not as knit as a brawl but they are going to be more knit together than a dive comp is um so you still get a lot of that close range value but then also you get a lot of value out of the sustain that baptiste provides with his immortality field and his large amounts of healing you're also going to find a lot of value out of your just general amount of uh, a capability of doing damage on baptiste with spam right because he can put like the name in first he baptiste can put a lot of spam damage out there just with his left click versus other characters like 
Ana doesn't really do spam damage, right? Brig doesn't really do spam damage. Um, you know, Lucio doesn't really do spam damage, right? Uh, Moria doesn't really do spam damage, right? So, like, Baptiste and Zen are, the, are those characters that can do spam damage, which all assists the composition. Um, and then finally, also, your ultimate works really well for a spam... Probably the best out of all those three comps with a spam comp because spam likes to sit there and shoot through damage amplifiers. That's how the composition works, right? Brawl... It kind of like go think of it like this. It kind of maybe goes a little bit against the composition to sit in place and shoot through something when their goal is to run at you and not sit in place, right? So equal in those two, bad and dive, right? We've gotten that. That all makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, move it. You also play, if I'm correct, I glanced at it. You play Ana, Zen, and Brig. Yeah, so I can show you. I play. I think my my Zen's honestly garbage, but I play like Bap, Ana, Brig, and I play Lucio a lot, and uh, Brig as well, and Moira. Okay, how would you say that your play time is split between those characters? Is it like do you when you say you play them does that mean you play them all up around equally or you kind of try to flex around or does... Lucio has my most play time out of any character mm. it's my most comfortable um then bap and anna or i guess anna bap okay i prefer playing anna over bap but i think that bap as a character i can get away with at the rank that I play a lot more stuff than I can with Anna. Uh-huh. That makes sense. Okay. So... Alright. Um... Do do do. Now let's just go through those characters real quick then. Um... So, Anna, I'll just mention what there is because I don't want to spend all of the session on it. So, rather mm -hmm. than going through the whole explanation, I'll mention what comps they're good and bad in, and then if you have questions, feel free to bring them up. Ana, she is good in brawl. She is good in uh, in a dive. She is meh in spam. Um, Brig, she is good in brawl. She is good in a counter dive. Um, not necessarily a spam. She's pro pretty meh in just a standard spam. But if you're mm -hmm. going up against a dive, then she's good. And then in a... I'm missing one here. Uh, in a dive, she is... Um, I would say... It, dep it depends on the, scenario, on the scenario. I'll probably say in most cases she's good in a dive, maybe slightly lower than in a brawl. Um, but I on a, I'd just say good. We'll just leave it at that. Um, Lucio, obviously I would say that he's fantastic in a brawl. He is maybe doable in a dive, not really fantastic in it though. And then in a spam, that pretty much goes against his core fundamentals of character. His core... What makes Lucio different is his speed, and spam doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> so, not good at all in spam. Mercy, um, good in spam, good in dive, bad in brawl, because she does not do very much healing. So, therefore, she is not really capable of keeping the, anybody in brawl alive. Um, Moira. Moira is going to be good in brawl. She's going to be bad in spam um, because um, I guess that the answer would be slightly more complicated because it's not on the tip of my head. I'd have to think about that for a second. But because she just has a lot of AOE healing and, and she that, that's what she prefers. And also spam usually plays a little bit outside of her range to do right-click right damage, which means she's not going to be able to um, actually get any healing juice back. Um, then besides that, um, she's also typically meh in a dive. There's maybe some dive, like, comps that you could fit her in, but usually she's meh with it. Um, so really the best comp she's in is Brawl, and then you can make her work in other comps. Um, Zenyatta, he is good in a dive, and he is good in a spam, and then in a Brawl, he is meh to doable um I, i'd say the the best brawl that he worked in was the was goats but then after that he doesn't really have the sustainability that he did okay so does that all make sense any questions on that yeah no that makes sense all right 
So, let's move on to other things, because I had other things. Um, so, let's see. We're going to also talk about um, kill feet. So, uh, i not noticing this is a major, major thing. I maybe saw, like, two fights where we didn't respect, respect it. Um, so, I'm going to mention and go over it. So, note that this isn't something that you're doing terrible at, but I will bring it up. Um, in general, you're not going to be terrible at very much, because you're diamond. But... <laughs> um, but we'll, we still bring it up because that means that we can get you good at the things and get you more consistent and whatnot. Um, so, in general, when it comes to knowing whether or not you have won or lost in fights, which is very important, the main way that you tell that, and it gets very complicated, this is the basics, is you pay attention to kill feed and what's going on in there, right? When you're watching kill feed, you will be able to look at it, and when you do, you will say, okay, when we are up one to two or down one to two that is an advantage or a disadvantage in those cases you can play more aggressive or more passive um then when it is two to three that means you have either won the fight or lost the fight and that means when you have won the fight you just play extra aggressive you go in you push aggro when you have lost the fight you want to make sure that you are looking to get out if possible and if you do not get out you want to let them kill you this is so that you don't stagger yourself um which just to check i mean you should be you're familiar with that term yeah yeah yep so that's just so you don't stagger yourself it's prevention of that which in, that's the main reason why I'm mentioning it is because in two different fights we did end up doing that where we just kind of overstayed our welcome in fights that were very uh, I would say clearly lost where we were down like two or three teammates and we just kind of sat there instead of retreating and then that just meant that we ended up dying late and staggering for our team which isn't very good um, and then also don't use ult in one or lost fights um, and then also we are going to go over oh ultimates so when you're using your ultimate um in general you want to be looking we've already talked about making sure you're actually using it but when to use it typically is going to be at the start of fights this is going to help you actually use it and not just hold on to it when you use ults at the start of fights they inherently have ults that are used first typically inherently have more value than those that are used second so a thing for example we have immortality we or not i keep calling immortality role. we have window we use window we get about our team gets a bunch of kills right now they on the enemy team they decide the window well now they have less people to shoot through window because we just killed them all and additionally they also are already going to be at an inherent disadvantage in the fight and already losing the fight because we ulted first. So, not all ultimates in general, though, when it comes to ults, ults that are used first get more value. And additionally, they if you don't ult first, they could just end up coming in, ulting, and then winning the fight before you get even get a chance to use yours, which just causes you to hold on to it for longer, which is actually something that happened in multiple fights, where they just came in, they used ult, we didn't, and then they win the fight, and then we're forced to hold on to it for longer, because you obviously don't want to ult in a lost fight. Um, so, ult sooner. Right? Don't do it before the fight starts. You want to do it as the fight is starting, right after the fight starts, or mid-fight, um, just as early as possible without doing it too, too early. Um, Alright, so we have 10 minutes left. That's not enough for another game, and typically I use the last little bit to um, do a quick review. So I guess that's what we will do do now is we'll hop into the review portion of the session um and then also that'll be the wrap-up wrap period and we'll go over the main points um before that though i have one more topic i'll i'll discuss i'm gonna take a swig of water real quick. When I woke up in the okay. all right i'm very hyper right now i don't know what that's from but i'm talking very fast so i'm gonna slow it down slightly so you can understand what i'm saying um, so, all this is fine and dandy, but it's only useful if you can actually use it and do things with it, and that gets into how do you actually apply the things that we're talking about, because we talked about maybe some things in awareness and other things, and maybe some topics might seem very vague, like how the heck do I get better at paying attention to kill feed or my surroundings or danger levels, right, like those things maybe seem vague to actually work on 
So the way that you work on those things and anything else that you're trying to work on in general is that while you are playing, you are going to make sure that you're intentionally focusing on those things. That means that you're not going to autopilot, you're not going to just play to play, and contrary to popular belief, you're not just going to purely play to win, as when you do that, you just stagnate and you don't go anywhere, whereas when you play to improve, you end up actually winning and climbing. Um, so what that looks like within your gameplay is you're going to be thinking to yourself, Awareness, 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 right? And giving yourself that constant reminder to think through that thing that you're focusing on. When you do that enough, you're going to just have better awareness because that's how awareness works. When you think about it, your awareness is better because awareness is just paying attention. Um, when you do that for a long enough period of time, it's going to form it as a positive habit. Once you form it as a habit, you no longer need to put as much attention and effort and focus into it. Then you can move on to something else to work on. Now, I will mention, don't try to do everything all at once because that will get overwhelming. Um, you're not going to be able to do that. So instead, focus on one category of things or one to three smaller categories, which is what we're about to go over in a moment is the main points. So what should you be focusing on first and foremost? That is going to be what we're going over now. Um, and then before we continue, just to check that makes sense, yeah? Yeah. All right. So over to review. Abilities. Um, shift, 10 meter radius. Make sure we're not trying to use it when people are outside of that. Besides that, it seemed pretty solid. You weren't just popping it. Like Maybe we could have gone a little bit more in depth on it. But for the most part, you're good on that end. Um... Immortality, though, needs a lot, whole heck of a lot of work. Make sure, one, we're actually using it. When we don't use it, it doesn't do anything. Make sure that we're using it. Try not to hesitate with it. Just throw it out there. Sometimes we're delayed with it where somebody dies before it even reaches them. So try to be faster with just pressing the button. And then um, think after the math, okay, how could I have done that better, right? And then that'll help you improve upon it. Um, besides that, make sure that you are looking to use cover with it, not just throwing it smack dab in the middle of the open. Make sure that we're paying, the big one, pay attention to the danger levels of your teammates. How low are they? Are they in the middle of their team? Are they being shot up by six people? Um, how close are our, is our teammate to cover? Is there an ultimate happening, right? All these different things affect danger level. Um, so pay attention to all that, and then you should be a lot more dandy when you're paying attention to your team. Overall, that probably goes to like a medium ability usage goes to like a medium priority for you to work on, maybe a medium high, um, but for the moment I'd say maybe a medium. Um, moving on, ultimate usage. Ultimate usage, make sure that we're not always just kind of using it for ourselves. It's definitely okay to use it for yourself, especially if your team is all spread apart and you can't really give it to multiple people, or if you need it for getting kills immediately, like if you see an opportunity to get kills, or if you see an opportunity, like you see that you need a lot of burst healing, there's some instances where it's okay, but we used it pretty much every time for ourselves. So when you can, look to put it in front of your teammates and then everybody can shoot through it and it gets a lot more damage amplification. Um, then besides that, make sure you're not holding on to it. Um, actually use it. And then make sure that we are looking to use it at the start of fights, not after them or in between them or late fight. Um, overall, that is probably around a medium priority for you to work on as well. Um, moving on, we have mechanics. Mechanics um, generally seem to be very solid. Um... I'm trying to think if there was anything that we mentioned within mechanics. I actually don't think that we did mention very much within mechanics. So overall, we'll say that that is a... I'll mention if I think about it, or if I remember anything. But overall, that seems like a low priority for you to work on, right? So... Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's always satisfying. <laughs> um, besides that, we have positioning positioning make sure that you are on baptiste it's gonna be different per character but on baptiste make sure that according to your team you're a medium or sorry a close range medium if you have high grounds high grounds are fantastic look to take them we didn't really focus on that though um 
away from the enemy team, usually it's like a medium to long range. I would say usually like a medium. Um, and then besides that, with positioning, make sure you're just looking to use cover and take high grounds. And then besides that, I think that we did pretty good with positioning. So I'd say that one maybe goes to like a low to medium, but maybe like the higher end of that. Very close to a medium, but not really. Um, then moving on, I would say we have awareness. Awareness, make sure that you are paying attention to what is my team up to? What is the enemy team up to? What is everybody doing? Who? What are the danger levels of my team? Right? Like, are they? Who's in danger when? Because there are a lot of times where we just didn't know when people were about to die. Make sure that you're not letting like your team run like a mile ahead of you, because then that mean meant like we just didn't pay attention, and then that would happen. Try not to tunnel vision. Um, make sure that we're not just walking around doing a slow pan like just looking forwards and then doing this but instead we're looking around we're doing left right 360 right checking all of our surroundings so that we know what the heck is going on satisfying. additionally pay attention to um tab we didn't necessarily talk about tab but tab is how you can watch team comps right and more than that as well um i might i'd recommend typically getting in the habit of pressing tab at least once per fight um, after every single fight is what I mean um, and then that way you are able to see did anybody swap characters that again like that's going to affect should you swap characters and then also team composition dictates play style and how you should be playing um, as mentioned with that whole section where we talked about team comps um, as a review of that there's spam brawl dive dive plays normally Spam plays uh, far and slow. Brawl plays fast and close. Um, -doo -doo -doo. Besides that as well, pay attention to kill feed. We just went over that like eight minutes ago, so I don't think we need to necessarily review that, but just make sure paying attention to kill feed. Overall, that was probably a medium priority for you to work on as well. Just making sure you're paying attention to all those different things. Um... Um, yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to think if I, yeah, so a medium, maybe higher end of medium. Um, so to put that all in order for you to real quick, um, so a lot of, as you know, you might even notice a lot of these are clustered around the middle, uh, three of them. In fact, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Just means that you don't have anything that you extra suck at, <laughs> um, which is, okay. which is good. Um, but there are a lot of things that do need work. So, um, putting these in order so that you can look to work on them. Probably say number one, try to focus on that awareness first, as that will directly hmm, feed into the others. I'm trying to think. Um, Actually, you know what? I'm trying to think, because it's always, I always flip flop between these. I would say start off with your ability usage, then your ultimate usage, and then awareness. Awareness, I would say, uh, contains a lot of that goes into both of those categories. So here I'm what I'm doing is that even though awareness is the biggest category with the most things and it will affect the other things, um, you can focus on ability usage first and then that will get some of the thing that you, as you're focusing on ability usage and you're thinking about danger levels that at the same time will also work on your awareness, if that makes sense. So it's kind of, um, getting you to compartmentalize and work on kind of this smaller thing that will hopefully you'll be able to work on faster than just the entire broad category of awareness because typically I find that that's one of the ones awareness is one of the ones that people are slower at improving upon so to make this maybe slightly easier to break it down I'm going to say work on the ability usage then the ultimate usage and then the awareness is number three then four comes in at that positioning, and then mechanics n a is a non-issue um, for the current moment, not to say it couldn't come up in the future. All right? Mm -hmm. Any questions about anything we've talked about, or anything else in general? No. Yeah, all this this was super helpful, and it made a lot of sense. Alrighty. Well, I'm Good delivery. glad that it did.